every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. snow up on the mountains and it's real sunstroke weather down here. Hey, we got a pound of leather if we're gonna get to Junction City before Tag's train gets in. That little brother of yours had better appreciate us meeting him. I just hope this saddle doesn't melt off before we get there. Oh, Lofty, it's not that hot. Come on, the tracks are just up ahead and we can follow them on in. Here she comes, Bart. It's your show from here on. You sure you can handle the job all right? The train's got to be wrecked completely, good enough to put the Dodson line out of business. Think nothing of it, Mr. Hackett. Young Dodson will never hear me, not with all the racket in that cab he's riding. All right, we'll have your horse up the line for you. Get up there and keep out of sight until the engine passes. Forget it, Vic. There's nothing we can do now without tipping our hand. What about Bart? Our only worry about him is he might tell who he's working for. What do we do now, Hackett? One thing's sure, you won't do any talking. You're playing for high stakes, Vic, you gotta take a big gamble to win. Bart lost. How you figure on winning? They'll be expecting trouble now. They won't be looking in my direction. You ride on back to camp and stay put until I get there. You going back into Junction? No, I'm gonna find out who our interfering friends are. Ever seen him before, Paul? No, I haven't, Danny. Well, wherever he is, he won't be trying to rob trains anymore. What are you carrying? Well, nothing valuable, Lofty. At least nothing he could have carried off alone. I don't get it. He wasn't alone, Mr. Dodson. I saw two men lead his horse away from the old boxcar where he jumped on the train. Would you recognize either of the men if you saw him again, Tag? Gosh, no. They are too far away. But I would know the horse one of them was riding. It just doesn't make sense. What were they after? It sounds like they were after you, Paul. Or else they were trying to wreck the train. Can you think of any reason why? No, can't. 
Unless it's just because I'm such a bad engineer. How come you're pushing the engine? Last we heard, you were in medical school. I quit three months ago, right after Bud died. We were all stunned to hear about your brother. I suppose Ben took it pretty hard. Dad was awful fond of Bud. They were a lot alike, you know. Both loving the railroad and all. Hasn't Ben working now? Like I said, he was pretty fond of Bud. Hasn't done much of anything since he died. How about you? You gonna go on railroading? All the Dodsons have been railroad men, Annie. Well, as long as I can remember, you've always wanted to be a doctor. As long as I can remember, Dad's always wanted both of us to be railroad men. I was pretty disappointed when I quit medical school. And since Bud died, he hasn't any use at all for doctors. Sure doesn't sound like the Ben Dodson I knew. He's changed, Lofty. Changed a lot. Hey, I'm way overdue. I better get into the junction before Jim Henna sends out a searching party. Any chance of me riding the engine with you, Mr. Dodson? I'd like having you, Tag. We're short of firemen, and I could really use some help paddling that boiler. Gosh, no kidding. No kidding. We'll see you in town. <laughs> right. Make any sense to you, Annie? Paul, I mean, and this gunny. Why would anyone want the train wrecked? I'm only sure of one thing, Lofty. What's that? Somebody does. Hello, Dad. You both remember Tag. And Euclid's little brother, aren't you? Sure am. She and Lofty are on their way in right now. You're late, Paul. Had you in over an hour ago. When you hear what happened, you'll figure I'm lucky to be here at all. Yeah. Come on inside. I'll tell you about it while I make out a single track. Single track? Did you have an accident? Well, not exactly, Dad. A fella jumped on the train and tried to gun me down. <laughs> Where is he? There are two schools of thought on that, Jim. What do you mean? He's dead. No one at the coroner's office could identify him, so we figured he was just a hired gun. Either that or this blazing sun got to him. Sure can't figure it out. We have a plan to wreck the train. We'll probably try again. When's your next run, Paul? Tomorrow. The day after tomorrow is the first of the month. Why is that important? It's our freight commitment, Lofty. The way things have been going, we've already missed too many deliveries. If we miss one more this month, we lose the contract. If that happens, we'll have to sell out. Yeah, and the Dotson line will be no more than two streaks of rust in the right of way. With Bud gone, that's the way it'll end up anyway. No sense fighting the luck, it's all bad. Has been ever since my son died. You have a fine son, Ben, right here. One who's given up an awful lot to try and make you happy. Can't you realize that? I realize more than you think. Paul's not the railroader his brother was. His heart's not in it. And with Bud gone, neither's mine. I don't much care what happens to the dads in line. How are you, folks? Well, hi, Clint. This is Clint Hackett, one of the biggest cattlemen in the territory. Hi, Mr. Hackett. Hello, Mr. Hackett. Mr. Hackett will be one of our best customers soon. All the cattlemen are going to freight their stock to market. There'll be big profits in it. If Ben don't get back to work, we won't be here at roundup time, especially if someone else is trying to put us out of business. Yes, I heard you had quite a ruckus here. Uh, that's what I came over to see you about, Paul. Are you taking the train on the Mesa run tomorrow? Schedule says noon. Good, I'll be here. Hi, Tag. Hi, Annie. Boy, did I ever have fun watching her unload the train. Tag, this is Mr. Hackett. Glad to meet you, Mr. Hackett. I'm Annie's brother. Well, my pleasure, young man. Nice meeting all of you. Where are you headed, Clint? Oh, I thought I'd drop over to Brandon's place, see how the cards are falling. I think I'll join you. Fine, come along. How about the luck, Ben? It's running bad. A poker game's no place to be. The way I figure, good as any other. Better than staying here and trying to save your own railroad? I thought saving things was a doctor's job. You thought right, Ben. And that's just where Paul should be, and that's back in school, learning how to save lives. They don't teach them doctors too good, Annie. What do you mean, Dad? They didn't save Bud. You were sure right when you said he changed a lot, Paul. Oh, memories take a long time to store, Paul. He didn't mean what he said. Yeah. Good morning, young fellow. Uh, morning, Mr. Hackett. Thank you. 
find out. Everything I wanted to know. Young Dodds and Sigma train out at noon today. This time there'll be no mistakes. Sounds easy the way you talk. It will be. I'm going to take care of it myself. This is their last chance to meet their contract commitment. You still plan on piling up that train? Definitely. The man who controls the shipping costs of cattle in this country could build himself an empire. I'm going to be that man. With the train wrecked and no contract, Dodson is all washed up. Naturally, Dodson being an old friend of mine, I'll take the railroad off his hands at my price. Well, with you on the train, what do you want me to do? This time, we're not going to take any chances. The train won't be running loose. I've got a definite spot all picked out on a return trip back. Yeah? Now, I want you to do this. Paul taking that run today. This heat doesn't show any signs of letting up. No, it doesn't. What's the matter, Annie? Oh, it's Tag. I can't understand where he could be. Well, I haven't seen him since we rode in from Dodson's. Well, he was so anxious to get down here early today. He doesn't like him to ride off without telling us. One thing sure. You won't be riding far with that sun beating down like that. in 45 minutes. Tag show up yet? No, he hasn't, and I'm worried about him. It can't be far off, Annie. Look! It's Pixie. Something's happened. Oh, we've got to find him, Lofty. If he's out in this heat... It'll... I'll get the horses, Annie. Now, don't worry. We'll fight. Oh, I only hope we're not too late. Come on, Pixie. Falling through him. But we have to get him to town, Annie, and fast. In here on the cut, Lofty. Where's Paul? We need him. Last time I saw him, he's down at the loading dock. I'll get him for you, Annie. Is he hurt bad? I don't know. But if he is, your son's going to have a chance to prove a lot of things. What do you mean? Paul is the nearest thing to a doctor in Junction City. Yeah? Yes. And Tag's life may be entirely in his hands. What is it, Paul? High temperature. Deep coma. All the symptoms of thermic fever. What's thermic fever? Sunstroke. Complicated by shock from a fall. It's a wonder he's still alive. Will he be all right, Paul? I can't tell, Annie. I'll do all I can. I'll eat cold compresses, towels, anything will do. What are the boy's chances, son? I wish I could be sure, Dad. He may be in this coma for some time. Without the proper drugs, it's going to be pretty tough. Whatever happens, Paul, we know you'll do your best. Thanks. How is he, Paul? It's too early to tell, Annie. You'd better have Jim wire Mesa. Tell them we're not going to make our scheduled run. Oh, but Paul, what about your commitment? You'll lose the railroad. It doesn't matter. 
What's important now is Tag. He's my patient. I won't leave him. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm through trying to be something I'm not, never will be. I'm the one to say sorry, son. Sorry for a lot of years. I've been an old fool. Annie's talk outside started me thinking. And watching you, I realized she was right. The job you want to do, son, is important. Darned important. Don't worry about Tag, Annie. With my son doctoring him, he'll be all right. Hello, Jim. Lofty. See, the train's all ready to go. Where's Paul? Back room. How's the boy? It's hard to say, Clint. He's still in a coma. Tag. What is it, Paul? It's a normal reaction to this kind of thing, Annie. He's still a long way from coming out of it. Then, you're not taking the train out, are you? You bet your sweet life I am. From now on, the Dotsons are making their own luck. You gonna make the trip back with me too, Clint? Well, I sure am. You stay out here, Annie. I'll do all I can. Probably won't know anything for quite a while. Maybe not till morning. There must be something I can do, Paul. There is, Annie. What? You can pray. Annie, you've been up most of the night. Why don't you try to get some sleep, huh? Thanks, Lofty, but... Well, I couldn't get any sleep not knowing about Tag. <laughs> ben was right about making his own luck. What, did he get the mace all right? Sure did. He's on his way back, making a record run. Say, what do you think of that? He'll be all right, Annie. The fever is breaking. Thank you, Doctor. Tag. Tag. It's Annie, Tag. Hiya, sis. How you feel? Pretty good, I guess. What happened? You had a bad spill. Oh, oh yeah, I remember now. Pixie fell. Annie? That horse, I spotted it. You mean the one that you saw by the boxcar yesterday? Yeah, that's the one. And you know who it belongs to? No, who, Tag? Clint Hackett. Hackett? Are you sure, Tag? Positive. I followed him way out into the rocks and saw him meet another guy. That'd be the second man in the boxcar. Hackett's on the train with Dad. Tag, you just lie still and do exactly as Paul says. Right. Come on, Lofty, we've got to get out there and warn Ben. He's sitting on a hotter kettle than he thinks.
any. Look. Like Hacker was trying to corner the market on freight and cattle, Ben. <laughs> he probably figured he could buy the Dodson line awful cheap if I took that nosedive off that trestle. Sure lucky you and Lofty rode out, Annie. Well, it was kind of roundabout. You know, it's strange the way things worked out, Ben. What do you mean? Well, if Paul hadn't saved Tag's life, we'd never have known to ride out here. <laughs> what do you think of that son of mine? Saved two lives and not even a full-fledged doctor yet. 